Welcome back! This is the video where I'm going to show you how we're going to find the tangent line from the given graph. And in this case, we're actually working with some kind of idea behind the graph. We're talking about the Newton's law of cooling. And we are saying that according to this law, the rate of change of an object's temperature is proportional to the difference between the temperature of the object and that of the surrounding medium. The accompanying figure shows the graph of temperature T versus time T, so capital T and a small, small T, in minutes for a cup of coffee with initial temperature, which was left, you see, for, for example, on a table with the temperature 200 degrees, and it is allowed to cool in a room with a constant temperature 75 degrees. So, the Newton's law of cooling tells you how to calculate what temperature is going to be of the cup of coffee left on the table with the given temperature of the cup of the tea or coffee and with the given temperature of the surrounding, in this case, temperature of the room. So, the temperature of the room is 75 degrees and temperature of the coffee is 200 degrees. First, they ask us to estimate uh, T that's capital T, that's temperature, when after 10 minutes. So I wonder what's going to be the temperature of the coffee after I'm waited and stared at it for 10 minutes. And the graph is given in blue. He tells you that first it cools down pretty fast and then it more or less stabilizes at some kind of place. So we predict that we started from 200, so that's my uh, cup of coffee here. And it had 200 degrees hot, not Celsius, by the way, in Fahrenheit, that's important. And then the temperature of the room is important. Of course, if temperature of the, of the room is 110, welcome to Arizona, then uh, it will take more time to cool down. But in this case, with 75 degrees inside, uh, the coffee is cooling down dramatically at the beginning, and then the cooling process slows down and stabilizes around probably 80, see? looks like so probably the temperature will be like 80 degrees and at the bottom you have time t so if i it seems like if i'm gonna wait for 40 minutes so say you forgot about the cup of coffee and went to watch an episode of your favorite show in 40 minutes probably you find your coffee being already only 80 degrees so it's not hot anymore and that's how you uh, look at the graph here so at time zero it was 200 and then they ask us what's happening at 10 uh, for a well how to find out what's happening at 10 just look at the graph and plug in t equals 10 over here find the intersection and find the output so 10 here is the input in time then i'm looking at the output that's um, the function of t time so that's going to be t capital t temperature it depends on time t and it seems like it's approximately 130 so t at 10 seems like to be 130 i can even put f capital f that's temperature units for temperature b for b they ask us to estimate the derivative estimate derivative of the function t with respect to the time t when it is when small t is 10 minutes that requires two steps, so I will be here. Step one, estimate the derivative of the function capital T with respect to small t. Estimation happens from graph and that's not going to be the exact answer. But estimation can happen if I take change of the output and divide by the change of the input. We have one more notation for this. Uh, if you remember, t2 minus t1 all over t2 minus t1 that comes from the definition of the derivative to be a precise to put the equal sign over here you're just missing a limit as you remember in limit uh, denominator should shrink to zero so this is the definition of the derivative go and check that's exactly the case that's how we define the definition of the derivative however in this case we don't have uh, a function given algebraically so how we're gonna find the exact derivative and so on and so on so here we just asked we are just asked to approximate the derivative using the graph and i'll show you how to do that 
To approximate the graph, I will choose two points, T2 and T1, on the y-axis, in this case capital T axis, output axis, and then a cor corresponding T2 and T1 on the input axis, that's time T axis. The common practice is to choose intersections, so these two points are good, because it's just kind of convenient to calculate them. Yeah, it's not going to be very easy, because it all seems to be very approximate, so let me give you several ways to do it, and then you decide which one is better. So two points on the y-axis. I need to look at the triangle. So I'm looking at the triangle that looks like this. This large triangle. And this is how I'm going to approximate the slope, this slope, which is exactly what they ask us about, right? dt over dt. And this is slope m, and as you can see, it's negative. So we expect it to be negative because uh, it's, you see, the uh, angle shows negative slope. Let's look at the big triangle. I'm looking at the change, change in output over change in input. That's why I need to find these two points and these two points. Well, the zero, zero is easy. But the first point over here is something a little bit more than 170, and that's approximate, it's 175. Since they ask us to estimate, then we don't, we're not required to be precise. So my first point, T1, the first point, is approximately 175. And the second point, T2, is zero. So I'm talking about this point over here and this point over here. Output for each point, the height for each point. Then I'm looking at the input for each point, that's the width. This point and this point. The second point is zero again, so I'll write down T2 is zero. But what is my T1? Again, looks like we need to approximate. It's almost 40, but a little bit less than that over here, see? And I'll approximate it as 38.5. That's just a guess, it doesn't really matter. It's all going to be an, an estimate anyways. So I took those two points from the graph, again, change in output and change in input. In the fraction, it will look like this, change in output, take the second value minus the first value. As you can see in the formula, T2 minus T1. T2 is 0, T1 is 175. Pause this video right now, if you don't understand why I switched the order. Why is not 175 minus 0? Because you always do second change minus first change. So T2 goes first. That's why the slope will be negative, because of this negative 75. 175. Same with the denominator. In this case, oh, actually in denominator, uh, this is T1. I just realized. T1 is 0, and T2 is the one we approximated. So let's change that. Let's fix this mistake. T1 is 0, and T2 is approximately 38.5. Why this is so? Because the way function goes is this direction. So we started from the top and going down to the right. That's why Y changes from top to bottom, but X changes from left to right. So this point goes first, 0 goes next. But when it comes to the input axis, which is t, 0 goes first, and then this approximate point goes next. Hopefully that makes sense. 38.5 minus 0, and that's approximately, and it, you know it should be negative because slope is negative, negative 4.54. 4. That's my estimate. And now we'll do b one more time, but with different values. I'll even copy the graph for you. Paste it here. Okay, not the whole thing, but okay. And I will do B one more time with different points. And the thing is, I want to explain here, any triangle will work. You don't have to use a triangle I chose. So it's just a common thing to choose a triangle, which is this big. That's what we did before. Because it's just convenient to find X intersections and Y intersections. But actually, any triangle will work to find change in y and change in x. And this time, I will show you a different one. Why not to choose a triangle 
where we actually see some kind of good numbers. For example, why not to choose something like 110, let me see, so for example, okay, just for you to know, I made a small pause and just put um, x-axis and y-axis values to make sure you understand it better. So let's choose a small triangle. Your, the whole goal is that the triangle is indeed part of the tangent line and touching the graph of the function. So I like this tiny one, 150 to 110 from 5 to 15, because these values are actually pretty straightforward and still part of the tangent line. So that might work. And let's see if the answer is the same and the answer should be the same. So let's see. My T1 is 150. That's this one. It is 150. My T2 is 110. And you see, I don't have any decimals this time. It's actually pretty good. Now, wait, that's my change in Y. So that's 150 and 110. I don't have to write it down again. Then you should find change in input. So that's 5 and 15. T1 is 5. T2 is 15. Let's build the fraction again. dt over dt is approximately t2 minus t1. That's 110 minus 150. That's what makes it negative. Slope should be negative. Then t2 minus t1 in the denominator gives me 15 minus 5. And that is negative 40 over 10. And that's minus 4. Pretty close to whatever we had before. Before we had. Before we had negative 4.54. So almost the same thing. That's just the explanation that you can choose different values. Just make sure you follow the same rule. Change in y over change in x. Okay, now we have a last uh, question here. The Newton's law of cooling can be expressed with this formula. This is a well-known formula, even I know it, even though I'm not in the physics major. The derivative of the temperature of the uh, tea, or in this case is coffee, with respect to time passing by, uh, equals k, which is a constant, that's a constant, is, is proportional to t0, and t0 is the original temperature of the surrounding, yeah. And times t minus t0, basically. So that's the idea. And let's calculate. They ask us to calculate, in this case, uh, use parts A and B to calculate K. So they believe we have all the given information, all the needed information to calculate K. That's constant. Basically, this constant will be different from, uh, and it depends on the temperature of the surrounding, depends on the temperature of the liquid you're working with, and so on. Not only liquids, there's also lots of experiments of the hot potato, you microwave the potato, put it in the room, how fast it's going to be cooling down. In inside piece, the inner piece will be cooling down uh, slow. So, dt, I'll choose black color, dt over dt equals k, which we need to find t minus t sub zero. Let's see what we already have, what we found. So, we definitely need to find this k. We approximated the derivative, and I will use my first result, 4.54 approximated. Then, the capital T, uh, let me do small, first the small t. The t sub 0, it says that t sub 0 is the temperature of the surrounding, and that is 75 degrees. Here it is. 75 degrees. So T sub 0 is 75. Well, what is T then? Uh, the T actually we found at the beginning when they asked us uh, what is happening uh, at the first 10 minutes. If you remember, well, they actually asked us in B to figure out what happens in 10 minutes. Well, in 10 minutes, the the temperature is already 130. So we're plugging 130 over here. And now since we have everything, 
we can calculate K. So again, this is my room temperature. Room temperature. Just solve for K. In this case, I'm having equation 4.54 equals K T minus OT. I have 130. 130 minus 75. K equals, divide by the f this uh, parenthesis. So it's going to be a 4.54 all over 130 minus 75. It's approximately negative 0 0.825. As you can see, still negative. So the Newton law of cooling gives you negative result. That means something is cooling down. That's the idea with the K, which is a constant proportional to the the original initial temperature of the surrounding in this case in of the room well, that's pretty cool kind of interesting uh, question always nice application and also a good practice of calculating slope or basically derivative using approximation from the graph hope you liked it and uh, let me know if you have questions about that see you next time